You are listening to a Bucking Spurs podcast. I am Robert Trejo, your host of this show. Today we're talking Derek White making an Olympic lift. Look easy, that boy's balling. Um, DeJounte Murray came out, reported that he is 100% ready to go. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Tim Duncan is still rocking those Adidas in practice. And those dreads, though, I need to see those dreads on the bench this year. I hope he doesn't go back to old school Timmy once the summer's over and gets all, you know, cleaned up and whatever. Nah, nah, nah. I like this this new era Tim Duncan that we're seeing here, man. If you saw that picture of him with uh, working out with DeJounte, I like it, man. I like it. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Pop having, it seems like, the best time coaching USA, USA basketball. I feel like this is a breath of fresh air for him. We're going to get into that. DeMar DeRozan's contract extension is still on the table being reported out there, um, which is a good thing. Spoiler alert, but that's my take on it. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, Who has the most on the line this season? We're going to get into that a little bit. Um, But first, there's a beat. It sounds like this. Sire Nova. Drop it, baby. So Derek White, I mean, let's talk all about it, right? He wasn't supposed to be there. Then they called him up. He shows up day one, day two. He's the best player on the floor. Jeff uh, Van Gundy is saying, you know what? He's the best player on either team and that he's playing like he belongs on that floor, that he knows that he's ready for that level of competition, that he's not afraid. I mean, we saw it, guys. We saw it all last season. There's no one that he's afraid of on this on the basketball court. Um, I want to talk a little bit about his body. I mean, Derek White last year was kind of, you know, he was a little bit bigger than year one. He's, we didn't really see him year one. And then he looked toned up, right? Second year, looked toned up, looked cut up. He looked like he was ready. For, he had the endurance built in him to go through a season. But I don't know if, you, if you've noticed. Y- y'all can tell me if it's just me. But Derek White, he looks jacked. He looks swole. And like, I'm not even just talking about his upper body, but his lower body, his legs. And he just looks so like they're like tree trunks now, man. And Derek White is not a guy who who goes above the rim all the time. He's more of just like, I'm going to finish. I'm not saying that he can't go above the rim because we all know that he can. Paul Millsap knows that he can go above the rim. Um, But I want to talk a little bit about point guards in summer FIBA basketball that have gone through that experience and came out the other side a whole new player and with a new kind of status you know on their on their on their name point guards like uh Derek Rose back in 2011 2012 Russell Westbrook um those two guys come to mind that you know before they had done Olympic basketball they kind of showed what they were capable of very much just like Derek showed us this year what he's capable of doing um but it wasn't until after they participated in FIBA basketball where they both both those guys made like MVP jumps where it was like oh shit this kid this point guard here isn't kid no more he's actually might be one of the best point guards in this league and I feel like Derek White is about to do the same thing uh they had the scrimmage the white versus blue USA scrimmage and to be honest Derek White was playing with a lot of you know the second team and he didn't play all that well but I don't think that's something that's gonna I don't think that scrimmage was was a make or break for anybody um I think that in practice we're seeing him scrimmage all the time the coaches are seeing him in and out um on a day-to-day basis they know they're not going to base someone on their being on the roster or not based on that scrimmage that was publicized. That was more for us. 
these guys see them go at it every day they know what these guys are capable of and what they can bring to a team even sometimes it's like yeah on an olympic team those those last two guys on the bench aren't even going to really play but sometimes you want those last two guys on the bench to be the ones that are going to just kind of bring people together continuity um hold people accountable in the locker room stuff like that you know good team teammates um guys are all about usa and about the team basketball concept and whatever it is that they're preaching in that locker room so i think Derek white has shown enough um we're hearing a lot about him and bagley bagley um from sacramento those two guys made the next team the next cut right to go to los angeles and participate with usa basketball over there but it seems like bagley dropped out and he said he's like you know what i, I enjoyed it whatever but re the reports say that he's gonna focus on his game and get ready for next season which is fine i i can't un i can't like emphasize enough how important usa basketball is to some player development man like you've seen jason tatum looking really good you know you've seen kemba walker looking really good um uh uh jackson from memphis collins from atlanta those are guys that if they can stay on this team are gonna have huge seasons next year because this is confidence building man like to go and play in the olympics and even if it's fiba just like this elevates your game because you're playing against competition the best players in the world like like you're literally you're you're playing for something else besides your contract besides your you your, your nba team and you're actually playing for your country and, and it's more about pride and and um coming together and representing the usa you know what i mean and so i think players that participate in this camp and this experience come out the other the other side 200 percent better than than they do going in right so i'm excited to see derek make that same curve and i think derek is hopefully makes the final roster i really want to see him go and uh and participate uh in china and australia over the next month or two Dejounte Murray is 100% baby. He announced on his uh, on his I don't know if it was on his Instagram or who announced it, but fact of the matter is he's ready to go, and which which means that now the only hurdle really in front of him is the mental hurdle, right? The mental curve. Naturally, coming off an injury, especially an ACL injury or anything like the Achilles or stuff like that, it takes a full season for that player to get his confidence back and really confidence meaning not being scared to do certain movements or or uh test their explosiveness i mean like gordon hayward guys i expect gordon hayward to have a really good season this year because last year i think he was going i mean y'all saw it he didn't start getting better until the very end of the season and it took a whole season for him to come back i mean i know how intense and how um gruesome and you know what a traumatic experience that his injury was gordon hayward's not you know he didn't tear his acl he, sh he snapped his leg right so that takes a lot of mental training to actually have confidence in your body again and rudy gay you know what his first year with us was his first year coming off an achilles injury and he wasn't rudy gay in year two last year we saw a totally elevated superior rudy gay than year one and his stats proved it and i think that DeJounte Murray might go through that same thing and that might be the case for this season for Murray that can be argued you know if we want to look at the bright side I'd say that the timing of his injury last year being in the very beginning of the preseason was best case scenario I mean don't get me wrong I don't want anyone to get hurt but if someone had to get hurt I mean the preseason is where I mean you know you hope it lands because if it's during the season that means that you know a year-long recovery is gonna take him a year to get back right so if it's in the playoffs that's why like people are, are counting in clay thompson coming back and like i'm just like dude no like this the clay thompson is not gonna come back until the playoffs last year that's why it's like golden state to me is still gonna make the playoffs but if we're counting them making a run in the playoffs with clay being in the mix well i'm sorry but i just don't see that happening but Dejounte coming back it's 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 so exciting i mean yeah like he went down that gave us the opportunity to see Derek white evolve and just explode onto the stage right 
you know, so if I had to bet, though, I would say that it won't take D- uh, DJ all season. Um, DeJounte is one of the most, like, headstrong players that have come across the Spurs and have walked into those into that gym. Uh, he's very much cut from the Spurs cloth men- mentally-wise. He's tough, man. He's a mentally tough player. Um I expect him to be confident. Now, I also think it's going to take him 20 to 30 games to get that real, like, you know what, I'm good. Like, I don't need a, to hold back at all. It takes a little bit of time, and you can't replicate that in practice or in the gym or anything like that. It just cannot be done. It takes game reps to feel that again, right? And I can't wait to see DJ come back and just kill it. My voice is a little bit gone, guys. Today's the first day of school. Um, so I've been going over a syllabus and all this stuff all day. So my voice is a little bit shot. Excuse me. Pardon me for that. I got to teach these young kids and you best believe that the San Antonio Spurs is a part of my syllabus. And it's if you come in here with any of this warriors, James Harden stuff, you better get out you just, you're not going to pass my class. Just kidding. I sell them. I joke. I joke, but not really right. Wink, wink. Go Spurs. Go. We're going to take a little break here just to remind you guys that we have a teacher appreciation contest going on on Instagram and on Twitter. We have a couple prizes. We're going to give prizes away to the top four Spurs repping in your classroom. Teachers that rep the Spurs in their classroom, either if it's a sign, a wall, a banner like me, it's in my it's, you know, Go Spurs Go is a part of my opening day presentation, introductory lesson about myself. I have a couple other Spurs things hanging around here in the classroom. Spurs teachers, teachers of Spurs Nation. If you know teachers, if you're listening to this pod and you know some teachers that are Spurs fans and that rep that stuff, make sure that you tell them to hit me up on Instagram. We got a contest going just for the teachers of Spurs Nation. Um, we, I pre, I'm one of y'all, right? So I appreciate y'all to the death, man. I know the grind. The struggle is real. And you know what? Having a little bit of Spurs Nation in the classroom always makes it a little bit better. So go ahead and check out my Instagram and see what the qualifications are for this contest. For one, you have to post your re- the, your classroom and, and what you what Spurs, you know, whatever it is you got hanging. That's one thing. So you got to tag a couple of people. And three, you got to uh, screenshot yourself rating and commenting on this podcast. And we'll do the giveaway at the end of the month on August 31st. So stay tuned for that. All right. Back to the pod. So the other day, DeJounte Murray posted a couple of pictures of him working out with Timmy, like alone in the gym, right? Like it's just those two guys. And um, I mean, I don't know. Those are the only two guys in the gym, but in the picture, they're the only ones. There's just something so like romantic about those pictures. And I don't mean like in an intimate way, like, like, you know, you know, whatever, but I'm talking about in the terms of basketball. It's like, that's, that's beautiful. Oh my God. To see Timmy. Like with his dreads and all, he had like a headband on with his dreads flowing all over the place. He went up to contest, you know, uh, a mid-range jumper from from DeJounte. Um, Still rocking those Adidas by Adidas. Tim Duncan is just loyalty, man. (laughs) It's like, dude, like you think, oh, once he's done playing, he can do whatever he wants on the shoe game do his swoosh thing with nike or let's say he wants to go to china and wear a couple of those no he's in the gym low-key still rocking those adidas that's just dope dude timmy's just he's just the, the freaking man dude um i wanted to talk a little bit about popovich and i mean you're we're seeing all this footage i'm definitely trying to keep tabs on all this footage on on um and and comments that he makes at usa basketball let's talk about usa basketball really quick He's having a blast, dude. Like that one time, there's a clip out there where a reporter comes up and like, he's just like, hey, Pop, can I ask you about Derek White? Pop puts his arm around this guy and says, yeah, walk with me. Walk with me. (laughs) That reporter must have been like, what the fuck? Is this in Twilight Zone? What the hell is going on here? Pop wraps his arm around this guy. He's like, walk with me, walk with me. He's like, hey, man, like what the question was, you know, what do you think about Derek White and, and you know, his opportunity here and, and whatever. And and I like what Pop said, man. Pop, in a nutshell, just said, you know what, he he's he's doing well here and, and it's just what the doctor ordered. And if you, you know, like how I mentioned earlier, 
It is just with the doctor order, man. Like, like Derek White's getting better every practice when he's playing against these guys in the summer, guys. It's there's only so much better you can get in the summer. I mean, like you're you're working out, you're working on your body, you're working out your skill game, you're doing a lot of drills, you're trying not to do a lot of five on five basketball because you don't want to get hurt, right, for the next season in front of you, which is smart. So a lot of players, they know they'll they'll go to like you know you see these pickup games in the gyms, but nobody's playing any defense, man. No one's going real hard because no one wants to get hurt. Um, or in the Drew League, I mean, come on, like all this stuff, it's just it's just like half-ass pickup ball. It's it's really what it is. You see you see guys that score ten points a game in the NBA drop twenty-five a game in the Drew League. It's just not the same. So, to, but USA basketball, it's competitive. It's at a high level. There's expectation. You, you, you're, you're practicing for a purpose. You're trying to make a team. Like you're still so competitive. I remember seeing a clip from Kyle Lowry saying, "Like, damn, dude, this." He's like, he's like, I think USA basketball and, and FIBA basketball, I should say, is the most competitive league in the world. That's that's Kyle Lowry talking, and that's because it's true. Everyone out there is is competing for something more than themselves and more than money right they're they're playing and they're competing at a high level and Derek white being there through all that process is just what the doctor ordered just as competitive as we thought he was last year he's getting better and like i said earlier his body's getting stronger and you put the, him next to dj next to oh my god dude murray and and, and Derek white as a one two Guys, they're going to be so good on the defensive end of the floor. They're going to be a problem for the NBA. But anyways, um, we can talk about that all day. But Coach Pop, man, he seems to just be enjoying it. He has like a new life about him. Um, I just, it's so, it's so, uh, it's just good to see this guy enjoy the game. There's a lot of times throughout the regular season where I feel like, man, Pop's just had it. He's had it with the media. He's had it with with the grind he's just you know he's not that engaged in the on on the, uh, i don't i don't believe this but a lot of people say oh when you look at pop now on the sidelines he's just he's a little bit more laid back he's just not as engaged and like he doesn't want to be so hard ass and all these things and and he mentioned also in a clip that there hasn't been a day in the past year or two years where he hasn't thought about usa basketball that's passionate right there and and that's going to translate over to the court it's going to translate translate over to medals this summer next summer in the olympic team and i just want to give a shout out to coach pop for leading us for doing his thing for our country you know he always puts our country before anything else you know like like you know this game is just a game to him it's it's more about representing your country the right way when you're out there and you know and 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 being good citizens and things like that and just you know what pop just shout out for him doing his thing and getting us ready getting our young bucks ready because that's what it is it's a bunch of young players too and i bet you he enjoys that too he's working with a lot of like one one year two year three year guys with your exception of like your five or six veterans that are still there on their roster and i'm sure he's having a lot of fun uh teaching these young kids man that are eager eager and hungry to perform on this stage because guys if you go back and look at the other usa teams like like it's always star studded yeah but there's been years where in the fiba rounds like like what we're doing right here in the qualifying matches we have some younger guys mixed with some veteran guys and this is really a jumping off point for a lot of these young players like tatum brown um and derek white and um you got a couple mixed you know veterans in there like kemba walker and those guys who are leading the way uh it's just super exciting and i'm glad for pop i'm glad pop is having a good time right now so demar derozan is reportedly reportedly the spurs are still considering giving him the max contract right so we've been eligible he's been max extension eligible i think for a few months now i think it was in june um early june when when he became eligible and we haven't extended it to him to me that's just like okay guys let's 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 take a step back and let's look at spurs history right like when do players really ever get max money with us i mean it really doesn't happen i mean we offered it to Kawhi, i think as like a last like hey man like we really want you here we're gonna give you max money that didn't work out he chose to you know he still wanted to leave um but dude tony parker never got max money manu never got max money timmy probably only got max money a few times not all of his contracts were maximum contracts and i think moving forward it's like dude if demar and lamarcus aldridge those two those are the two guys that are 
that are getting the big bucks with San Antonio and 21, 22 million dollars a year. You know, we if we want to keep paying these young guys in year three or four, which we will have to, you know, DeJounte Murray is going to, you know, his payday is coming up. And we have, you know, all these young guys that are earning the right to get paid. If we want to avoid being like everyone else in the league where we develop guys and then they have to leave because we can't afford to pay them, it takes sacrifice, man. I'm, our big three sacrificed for 20, like, freaking years, man. Like, those guys never made as much money as they could have somewhere else, but they sacrificed. They sacrificed roles. They sacrificed uh, stats. And they sacrificed money. And I'm not telling DeMar DeRozan to go and, and, and not take the max. Like, no, dude, get your money. But at the same time, if you want to be a part of the Spurs system and, and really build something here over over maybe the rest of his career, that's what it's going to take. If he just wants to play with us for this season and next season and then try to go get the most money that he can, well, I don't think this max extension is really going to be offered to him. I mean, if you ask me, I just I don't see it happening. And I think I would love to have DeMar DeRozan here long term, but it's going to take a lot of sacrifice on the money part. And I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Spurs Nation feels, how Spurs Nation feels about that too. Y'all get at me and y'all let me know. Real quick, I want to talk about who has the most to, on the line this season to prove. And Demar aside, Lamarcus Aldridge aside, um, I think Bryn Forbes is the guy that's going to have a lot to prove. He kind of solidified himself last year, but because we've gotten so much younger, and insert Lonnie Walker, insert Keldon Johnson, insert. And Sir DeJounte Murray. I mean, like, I hope that Bryn keeps getting better because I love Bryn. Bryn brings the swag. He brings the attitude. He brings that grittiness, that toughness, that that I'm going to, that you're not going to score on me mentality, that I'm going to score on you. You can't guard me. And, and, and he puts the team before himself. Attitude, we need Bryn. We need Bryn. And I need him. And I, ho I hope that he steps up this year and just keeps not that he didn't last year, but that he just keeps getting better. And I want him to be a leader on this team for many years to come. And I think this is a pivotal year for him to come and just be as efficient as he was at the end of the year, all season long. The way he played in the playoffs, all season long. And and be able to grind out and lead our team. I think Bryn has a lot to prove. I think... Uh, DeJounte Murray coming back off injury has a lot to prove and the coexistence between him and Derek White is something that that's 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 going to be interesting. Lonnie Walker has a lot on the line and more not pressure wise, but more excitement wise, like, man, like this kid saying he wants to be one of the best players in this league and he has all the tools to get it done. He can really be one of the best players in this league. He can. Um, which is going to be exciting, man. Oh, my God. To see him come out. Luca's got a lot on the line, too. Luca's got to be able to come in and just not mess up. I hope. I just really hope he doesn't spend most of his time down there in Austin. I, I want to see him play in San Antonio. Other than that, man, I mean, I think I think we're, we're solid, man. We're just so solid. We got a good blend. Patty don't got to prove nothing. Marco doesn't got to prove nothing. They are who they are. Damari Carroll doesn't have to prove anything. He's going to be a 3 and D guy. Rudy Gay's just got to have another stellar year like he did last year, uh, not regress. Uh, Jakob Podol is probably gonna, another guy that has a lot to prove. Um, he stepped up big in the playoffs, and, and he gives us good minutes every time he's on the floor. But what can he do to evolve into a, a better player? He needs to finish a little bit better um, around the rim. He needs to have a little bit more of an offensive game to him. Um, even though we're not going to dump the, the ball into him, he needs to be a better lob uh, catcher and be able to just kind of attack and rebound um, once the ball ends up in his hands off a, off a bounce pass or off a pick and roll or off ball movement or whatever. Um, decision, decision making on defense uh you know timmy being around <laughs> guys y'all know how how nasty timmy was on the defensive end i think timmy being around the gym is gonna improve Jakob potal's defense to another level level is gonna be a monster he's gonna be a monster timmy was always around the play like you couldn't go to the rim when timmy was in there like timmy was always there to contest always i think Jakob's gonna do that too this season well, that's going to be it for a Bucking Spurs podcast. It's a, a 
very exciting month guys i'm going back to work back to school um we got fiba basketball going on there's there's still things going on behind the scenes in spurs nation make sure that you give us a follow on instagram and twitter um and make sure that you share and rate and comment on this podcast on itunes spotify google play uh stitcher radio iheart radio all that good stuff share the love go spurs go